Hey, Shalom, I'm Israel. First off, I'd like to say, call halal, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakakadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone who taught me this truth. I also would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sisters that rock with us that sincerely uh, believe, Shalom to you as well. Uh, just back in the spirit with another lesson. I was just meditating on the process of how deliverance is going to come forth. We know through the prophecies that Yahweh Shah, which his name is in Nomen Omen, it means he is the deliverer. We know that Yahweh Shah is only, I only hope to be delivered out of destruction that's prophesied of Great Babylon, a.k.a. America. But in so doing, Yahweh Shah, he's going to come with the chariots. That's what brothers always are in the spirit to go into. You even have brothers who have the spirit to see chariots here and there, you know, in the current time that we're in, just to boost our faith. But it's just beautiful, the expectation of how our deliverance is going to draw forth. And I wanted to get an example of one of our ancient forefathers as well. So this just basically gives us a bigger push and a mindset of what we really got to fight for, man. We already know Daniel 12, it tells you that a time that has never been since the uh, history of the earth, loosely paraphrasing. So we're going to have to be delivered out of this tribulation. So I'm just going to go into how the chariots through Yahweh Shai, that's going to be the, the way of deliverance, man. Even though it seems far-fetched, it seems high sci-fi, you know, but that's really to those that are without faith. That the Lord didn't bespoke, that the Lord didn't give the eyes out to be visionaries to see it in the spirit, you know. But before I ramble on too much, I'll just give some precepts. Um, I'll start off here in Revelation one and seven. It says, "Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, Amen." So this is talking about the return of our Savior, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah, in the Hebrew tongue. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. So those clouds is talking about the chariots of Israel, what today people would call uh, so-called UFOs. But all through the spirit, we know that they're uh, identifiable objects, man, IFOs. And that's how the Lord is coming back. That's how he's making his glorious return. He's not going to meet thee as a man, as the scripture says. And it says, every eye shall see him, even they which pierced him. So we always go into the fact that that proves reincarnation is in the Bible. That's why a lot of these so-called Christians, they'll never be able to come to the level of understanding to, to know what these scriptures are really saying. Because they don't believe in reincarnation. So you have to ask yourself, how is our Lord and Savior going to see those who pierced them if they pierced them uh, you know way back in the ancient roman empire so that shows that reincarnation is in the bible and it talks about all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him so you know that's the time that we're coming into right now the destruction of uh modern day uh sodom egypt rome all these ancient kingdoms mixed into one great babylon this is the virgin daughter of babylon who the Most High, through his son, through the, the chariots, of course, through the nuclear missiles, the thermonuclear destruction, this place is reserved for a great judgment. So within a great judgment that's taken forth in Great Babylon, simultaneously, there's going to be a great deliverance for the elect of the nation of Israel. And I'll move on to another scripture. This is in Revelation 11 and 12. It says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So ultimately, this in the spirit is talking about the elect. They heard a, they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. Because these so-called Christians, they talk about the holy rapture, which really that just means being caught up, being delivered. But it says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither and they ascended which ascends means to go up and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud so that cloud is talking about the chariots that's how the deliverance is going to draw forth even though it seems like 
Well, it is a miracle, but it just seems so far out to the masses of these people who don't believe, man, who are going to be caught up in that destruction as they actually witness and see the power for themselves. So that's the beauty and the power of how the Most High's work. He's cold-blooded in this thing, man. All of those gainsayers and scoffers and mockers and naysayers, they're going to actually see the deliverance as well through the chariots of Israel, through the clouds. And it says, and their enemies beheld them. So even all of our enemies, they're going to beheld the glory that comes with that great salvation through the chariots, man. Because ultimately, we need a miracle to get out of this situation either way, man. So it's really not a far out thing when you think about it, man. You know? We're on the brink of a major destruction. So it's beautiful that our forefathers, we have an inheritance of a promise to get delivered out of this thing, man. Lord willing, we're those men who endure to the end. And all of our enemies and those who uh, forsook this word or basically betrayed us or whatever the case may be, they're going to have to give an account thereof in the day of judgment as well. They're going to see the power of the Lord. Everyone's going to see the power of the Lord. That's why brothers having to take the, the lows right now, man. We got... So much to look forward to in the spirit. I know the elder Yatazak in our camps, he says, we got the biggest, I told you, souls on the planet Earth to look forward to. And Lord willing, we endure to the end, we can take on the lot as those men. This is Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. And these people, they don't make any account of all the labors that our apostles put in on the highways and the byways teaching his word 30, 20 plus years to wake us up the fruit that was meet for repentance today to get this word, man. Awakening us out of a dead state. These people don't make no account of their labors because our apostles, you know, I'll just start with them, which they had elders above them as well, but they were uh, preaching before the, the so-called YouTube era where you could record and put up videos, man, when no one was looking. So the men that stood in great boldness and, and had no account of their labors made, you know, that's being manifested in the spirit. But because of those things, I'm going to continue reading. Verse 2, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear, and they shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all they look for. So these people, they're going to be troubled with terrible fear and they're going to be amazed at the strangeness of the salvation that's coming forth through the chariots, through the clouds that the scriptures talks about. So far beyond all that they look for because these people didn't look for the lowest of the people at the bottom of the totem pole, so to speak, Israelites. But furthermore, Israelites who are teaching this truth, man, being made to look as fools for Hamashiach. They didn't think that in the end game, those were the people who would be getting delivered out of destruction. It says, And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision in a proverb of reproach. And brothers, we are subjects of being a proverbs of reproaches on the highways and the byways, whether we putting up shows, you know, we're exposed to the elements for preaching this truth, man. We have a big target on our back. But because of that, Lord willing, we endure to the end. We're going to be delivered, man. They're going to be amazed at the strangers of our salvation. That's what we got to look forward to, man. We're going to get the last laugh, so to speak. And it's no different than our forefathers. Because we understand through the process of, pro of prophecy that some men are going to have to be martyrs for this truth. But the scriptures also says that there are some men... That shall not taste death to that see the kingdom of heaven come in, is in power. I'm loosely paraphrasing in Luke. And this is one of our ancient forefathers as an example. That was that came hither. This is a. Uh, this whole account is good, but I'll just start at a good place. This is second Kings two and nine. It says, and it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha. Ask, what shall I do for thee before I be taken away from thee? 
And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me, when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind unto heaven. And it says, and Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into pieces. So that's just a beautiful example of our forefather, Elijah. He was basically uh, 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 delivered. He ascended into the heaven on the chariots. And Elijah, not Elijah, Salakia, Elisha was there to witness it, man. So the same thing all through the spirit is coming back, you know, to those uh 144,000 in the remnant that the Most High has reserved to, de to be delivered out of this destruction, man. We're going to be caught up, Lord willing, we endure to the end, man. You know? So, Elisha, it says he saw it and he cried. So, that probably just significantly uh, uh, boosted Elisha's faith, man, because he was the protege of Elijah. And basically, he made a covenant on his own life that he would not depart from Elijah. So that's just a beautiful example in the spirit, you know, of one of our forefathers being basically translated, man, being delivered, being taken up. You know, we're looking for our Lord and Savior, you know, whatever voice through the angels to tell us to come up hither, man. So with all being said, Lord willing, it's uh, made sense to edify the body. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect.